Domestic helpers are human beings. They are people's children, sisters, brothers, daddies, mommies, uncles, etc. They are in your house to provide a service so that you can go out there and be a superwoman most times. But sometimes the story always turns out to be different and bitter. Is there a need to train domestic workers so that they will understand that they are there to work and that their service is quite necessary? Mrs. Sandra Chinelge has taken it upon herself to do that. Do stay with us. We'll be back. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is a Dark Willie Show, and today we want to discuss domestic help with Mrs. <laughs> Chime Age. Mrs. Chime Age. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Domestic help. You train domestic helpers? Yes. Uh, let's, out of curiosity, what led you to this? Well, you will agree with me that um, domestic helpers mm. are not exactly easy to deal with in our society. Okay. You know, in, yeah. And um, most of us have had problems with them. But I just, you know, it occurred to me that this problem might not have to do with them alone. We too have to meet them halfway. And for most of them, if not all of them, they wouldn't do that kind of work if they knew better. So I think to myself, what if there's a way that, you know, you can actually give them a basic kind of training so they know what to expect when they get to the employer's house and they can, you know, you know see themselves as workers because, of course, they earn a salary. Mm -hmm. So it's not because they are in the house. Okay. You know, everything is just there. Nobody asks you for references. Nobody says, bring this, bring that. You just start work. So let them know some, you know. Okay, let things. them know that yes. this is work. This is work, Okay. Yes. So where do we get domestic helpers from? Because we know that some people say it's a necessary evil. evil. Yes. <laughs> the people that help us maintain our homes or offices so that we can go out and be superwoman yes. or super superheroes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Where do we get them from? Well, you know, for now in the Nigerian society, there's really no place where you can say, okay, this is where. I know there are a few agencies and there are some agents that are all over the place. They don't have offices. You don't know how to reach them. But, you know, it's referrals. I need a house help. I call my friend. Who did you get your um, house help from? Okay, take this agent's number, and they're calling the agent. So mm -hmm. these people are all over the place. Okay. So there's no set place to get them. Some, you can call your mom or grandmom in the village. Mm -hmm. Because the this is African to... society. Yes. We have our relatives. Yes, our relatives you know. yeah. But it's not like before, when it's easy to get them from the villages. Even those in the villages don't want to work. So oh. at the end of the year, yes, at the end of the day, you are stuck with some of them who have been in Lagos for so long. Of course, they come with their own baggage. They lie and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So there has to be, because there's a lot happening, mm. you know, involving domestic Yeah, health, you know. all kinds of stories yes, now. Yeah. molestations, child abuse. Mm -hmm. So we need to do something. We just have to do something. It's been a burden for me. So I thought this has got to... Okay, so basically, how do you train them? Well, what we do, like we organize in-house training for organizations who can't really send them out. So we go to them and train them. Then we have seminars outside of their offices. That one, we include domestic staff, those that work in the home. Okay. Just let them out for like two, three hours on a Saturday, you know, and, you know, we just go through it with them. The idea is for them to even feel, even have a sense of belonging as in, okay, you care about them, let them go and do something. It's like an outing, you know, they just go there and learn a few things that helps them, you know, okay. with their work. Okay, looking at... Um uh, our homes, mm -hmm. because like we said, it is necessary. It is a necessary of evil. Course, yes. Yeah, but some, when they go get into this house, they are somehow maltreated. They are not treated as workers. So how do you change that mindset? Well, like like I said, these seminars. Even after the seminars, we send a sort of feedback to the employers, because it's like after a while, it becomes like an interactive interactive session. It's not about us telling them what to do. It's about them telling us their own experiences. Because truly, some of, of them are being maltreated where they are. Mm -hmm. So the employers need to know that these people are human beings. 
if you have an organization and you have people who work for you, you don't treat them. Some beat them and all that. You, you look at them as people who have come to work to earn a salary. So if you're not going to be beating your office assistant in your mm -hmm. office, mm -hmm. you have no right to beat a house up. Yes, yeah, some of these house can really drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. But there has to be a meeting point. Because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense for you to keep changing house every other day. It will affect your home, it will affect your children. Because the transition from getting one and not getting one, new auntie every day, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So the employers themselves will know, okay. you know, after the training that this is what right. should really happen and, you know. Okay, let's take a break. When we come back, you'll tell us how, what to look out for when getting a help. Okay. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Today's topic is very, very exciting. Domestic helpers, because we all need one at a point in our life. Why do we need domestic helpers in the first place? We can't afford not to need them, because most of us are working mothers, working fathers. Mm -hmm. Both parents have to go out in the morning and come back late in the evening. And mm -hmm. somebody has to there to tend to the needs of the children. Somebody has to be there to do housework to, you know, receive visitors in your absence and all that. So it's very important that we have them. But you can do without them if you are a superwoman. Mm -hmm. I haven't had one in a while. Okay. And it's telling on me. You <laughs> there are so many house, house yeah. chores and all that, you know. So we need them. Like before, our aunties, our mothers, our grandmothers could just send someone from the village to help us. Now it's not like that. It's not like that. Even so. when, now, even when there's somebody coming from the village and you offer to send them to school. They are like, no. They don't want because, to go to yes, school? Because, yes, the grandmother and the mother in the village, they all want money. They see the kind of money others are bringing in, you know, and they don't want school. They just really? want them, yes, they want them to go to Lagos, do what your mates are doing, send money home. So it's difficult to now find people who, at least when you're sending somebody to school, the mm -hmm. person will not misbehave because, mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. you know, so that is the reason why we don't really get them from the village, you know, okay. as before. Mm -hmm. But these agents manage to bring them in. So I hear, I understand that some go as far as Cotonou to bring... Yes, they bring. do. There are lots of them now here in Lagos. They go as far as, you know, the people there are willing to work for money, you know. But it's difficult at first knowing who to trust and who not to. What are the things you should look out for okay, when getting a house up? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That one is a bit tricky because a lot of them lie. A lot mm -hmm. of them pretend. On the first day of interview, for instance, they could tell you stories. Why did you leave your last place of work? My madam will be located abroad. The usual stories. Mm -hmm. My madam will be located abroad. Um, I went to bury my father. By the time I came back, mm -hmm. they have somebody new. And they bury their fathers like three, four times in a year, yeah. depending on where they are. <laughs> so things like oh, that. When those yeah. kind of stories begin to come up, mm -hmm. you are already skeptical that okay. you are let your antennas yes, should be up. Yes. It's difficult to find somebody that tells you, I just came from the village. Yeah. I don't know any, you understand? Mm -hmm. Although some of them lie and say they don't know anybody in Lagos, mm -hmm. so that you don't begin to suspect. Okay. But all of them, at the end of the day, they have people in Lagos, you know? Mm -hmm. So, well, if you are somebody who is discerning, while somebody is talking, you already know. Yeah. And the person's expressions, their gesticulations, their physical you. demeanor will tell you if this person is. You know, you can know somebody that likes children. If mm -hmm. maybe while you're talking with her, your child comes in, you can immediately know if she's the kind of person that's yeah. taking the children. Yeah. But she'll say something like, oh, how are you? And, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so you watch out for those no little sense, things, yeah. you know, yeah. But some of them just keep a straight face as mm -hmm. in, so you know what. Okay, so when you bring them into their house, what are those things you should look out for to know if they are really doing their work, they are not maltreating your children, they are yes. not stealing from you? Um, about maltreating of children, if the children are very young mm -hmm. and they are easily influenced and manipulated, it will mm -hmm. be difficult for you to know how okay. your children are being treated. Ooh. But if they are older and can receive phone calls or can talk to you, you can ask them what happened. You know, a child will never lie. Mm -hmm. They will tell it as it is. Okay. You know? Some of them, to even find out the kind of people they are, you can monitor their movements around the house when they take phone calls. Like there was one I had. 
She always takes phone calls in the middle of the night, and I didn't understand why. It was later I got to find out that that was the only time she could talk to her brother, oh, who was wow. the one that told her, look out for what you can steal. You can't just be there. Just, you understand? Yeah. You know? Initially, maybe she didn't want to, but I guess the pressure was mm -hmm. so much, so she did it. So that's what, what, part of what we train them for, because these people mess up your lives. You lose that job, you go elsewhere, you steal. How long? You do keep recycling yeah. you at some point. Nobody will want to use you. Your life is, you understand? Mm -hmm. I want them to know that this is a job. I mm. know a family that took in somebody. They never knew her from Adam. She spent like 13 years with them. She got married in that, from that house. She has her own family now. But mm. to, to, they're like family. Yeah, it's, it's became, possible. Yeah. Because she took them as her own. Mm -hmm. She didn't allow any outside influence to tell her what to do, how to mess up their houses, you understand? Mm -hmm. So when they begin to understand these things, that it is possible to stay somewhere and make something out of yourself. If it's school you want to go to, they will send you. If you want to learn a trade, they would help you. Just be good. Mm -hmm. and now you understand? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Let's take a break. When we come back, you will tell us some of the stories that you've heard, the good and the bad. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Please tell us some of the stories that you know. Well, recently we heard about the Ugandan house help. No, we we've all, somehow on the net, on the internet oh, now, yeah, we've seen a lot. Things, yeah. think, and there was this one of this uh, house help that kidnapped two children and they were found in Shagamo. Mm. Thank God those were found. There have been many stories of kidnappings. If people don't just go and kidnap a child. It's always an inside job, mm -hmm. either the house help or the driver. You understand? Mm. So a good thing the Ugandan house help received jail term. Here, I've not heard of, about anything like that. Either mm. people are not talking or there's no legislation by government to really nab people who do mm. such mm. things. There have been so many horrible stories. Even this morning, I was reading on the net that um, a housewife almost beat a 15-year-old household to death. Somebody now rescued her. That housewife would have had it up to here, mm. you understand, and she didn't know what to do. So, so what, 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 what kind of test should they go for? Because I'm thinking that some of them actually have mental condition. You see, the issue about the test thing is that, like some of us spend almost 50,000, if not more, in a year, mm -hmm. getting these ourselves to do tests. Because each one that comes, you are scared of HIV, you are okay. scared of hepatitis, you have to take them for tests. Mm -hmm. You keep doing tests. Every month, if a house help comes, you are doing tests. And they don't cost less than 7,000 mm -hmm. or 10,000, depending on the hospital. So most of them, most of the employers now are like, okay, just do the test. But anything beyond the HIV, hepatitis, mm -hmm. no employer wants to pay money for them to examine your head. It's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what to expect. But don't you think a, a, seeing a psychologist should be part of it? Because a psychologist will be able to detect whether this person is not. Yes, but a psychologist will cost money, except you get it for free. Okay. Yeah, so that's the problem. Mm -hmm. If there's a way that they do the test and... The house help carries the certificates wherever they are going to work. But you know, with these things, mm. you might not have HIV yesterday. Yeah. But by the time she's going to the next house, you never know. So mm. every employer is scared and want to just sort that part out. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the psychology thing would have been really good. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's just that some of them, their problem are not even the psychological. Some yeah. of them don't want to, they come in with some spiritual. Issues okay, too. I hear some people oh, don't yes. take them to the church for oh, deliverance. Yes, deliverance. How does that work? I want to come and initiate children, so I want to come and collect oga. Different yeah. Yeah, <laughs> agenda, so it depends on you know what they are really coming to. Mm -hmm. Some of them. How do you deal with such things? Are you, you are counseling them, you are training them. How do you train them on such issues? Well, some of them already know they have spiritual issues, okay. so they upfront they tell you. Some you discover along the line. They'll tell you. Yes, now, and what will you, do? you know, when, when the house is hot, I mean, fire is burning spiritually, mm. there's God in that house, the house that doesn't stay. Okay. You can do a research. They don't stay because two spirits cannot abide in the same place. All right. So some, when the fire is too hot, and mm -hmm. going back means more doom for them, they just open up to you and confess. Ah. But some, it takes, they would have initiated children, they would have done all sorts. Oh. Then somewhere along the line, you now find out. So these are things that, you mm -hmm. know, we will talk to them, you know, and really want to find out. It's not so easy because you are not God. You, really, you can't really know everything, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you try and just, you know, pick out and sort out the ones you can. 
Okay. Have you okay. have you had a first hand experience um, on some of these bad stories? Really, really bad. So uh, apart from the net issues that we've we've all been well, exposed to. Well, um, well, I knew about I knew about one, but um, before she could do anything, they had shipped her out. Okay. You know, mm. you know, they discovered that she was she had a kind of she was the queen, so to say, in the kingdom <laughs> from another. You know, uh, these things are better imagined okay. than when it really happens. You know? Yeah. Then there's one that had, had, you know, they said, well, I, I don't know about that. They just turned into a snake in the mm, house. And so the many stories. Yeah. yeah. You know about those ones. Yeah. Then there was some that was um, suckling a baby. <laughs> some things I don't want to hear. <laughs> so, there are so many. We don't really yeah, know what yeah, to hear, yeah. you know? So, because this is our society, mm -hmm. this is our, I don't want it to happen to somebody I know, even if it doesn't happen to me. What can I do to at least so let how them do you know prevent that? that? Like that suckling of a baby something. How do you prevent prevent such things? <laughs> you see, eh, that's why people always have two people in the house. That's why some women always make sure their moms are around. Okay. Or somebody that is mm -hmm. their relative. Because mm -hmm. you can't really keep an eye on these people all the time. Imagine a new mother, she has to quickly go to the market. The child is just a month or two old. I live with just the house help. You never mm. know what they will come up with. Mm. You know, so for some that can afford it or they still have mothers, cousins, mm. or to just beg them, just stay for this period. Yeah, because I remember when my children were growing, each time I had to travel, yes. though I had a housekeeper, I had to you bring in my sister. In. I beg to bring my sister, come and stay in for me one week because or two. Some, yeah. Your house becomes a party. Some even lock up the children that are at the house and go out. The children yeah. won't get to eat for the whole day. So I invite people into the house. You know, all sorts happen. So I'm still and, you know. Yeah, all so it's things, really, yeah. yes. So these are things that we want to make them know that whatever you do to somebody now, if you plan to get married in the future, it will still come back to you. So, you know, we mix the, you know, the spiritual, the moral, mm -hmm. the physical. We let them know all this. Okay. Let's take a break. When we come back, you will tell us which gender is preferred as a housekeeper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I guess you are enjoying yourself. This is still a Dark Willy show. Please tell us this gender issue. Do you prefer a male housekeeper or a female housekeeper? For me, I would say either. Because, either? Yes, because the male housekeepers, they have their own. Mm -hmm. They come with their own garbage. The female ones, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Some people, some well, employers prefer to have a male around the house if they have boys. Okay. And some prefer to have a female if they have girls. Okay. But you know, what somebody wants to do, the person wants to do, whether it's male or female. So, <laughs> leave that to <laughs> It's true, but I'm so scared of male housekeeper because, like the case we had the other day, a, a, a male housekeeper actually killed the mother. Yes. Not because they're strong, they have energy, but the female housekeeper can't kill you. In yes. that sense. Well, it's, it's, it's a choice anybody okay. has to make. Yes. Okay. But I know that basically, when there are boys in the house, they want to have a boy. Mm -hmm. there, so there. during your training, do you see more of a male housekeepers or female housekeepers you now? see more of the female. Because the, female. the men, I think most of them are cooks, gardeners. Drivers. Yeah, drivers. Although we train them okay. as well. They, are, they fall under the domestic staff thing. Okay. But I think the girls are the ones they just feel sure because maybe they deal directly with the children mm -hmm. more. Talking about the gender, uh, house, the gender housekeeper. Mm -hmm. Some people will employ a gardener. Or a get man. At the end of the day, it turns out that the get man will be the one who will turn out to a nanny, to be a nanny. Do you think that there is a need to train the employers as well as the employees? Well, if the employers will agree, it will be good to train them. Well, I won't say train mm -hmm. because they are not illiterate or anything like mm -hmm. that. I'll just say to sensitize them mm -hmm. for the need to understand some of these issues these people have mm -hmm. and to be able to meet them halfway, to be, to be able to understand their issues and to do something about it if they can. Okay, so you know, talk more on the training, the things that they should do. The issue with the employer is mainly that they are never around. So okay. if they see any kind of help, okay. they accept it wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you don't know what the person's agenda is. You understand? Mm -hmm. you've, you've, you've employed somebody to be a gift man, and at the end of the day, he's doing the driver's work. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, he's doing the nanny's work. Mm -hmm. It's a bit risky if you ask me, mm -hmm. because you really don't know the person's agenda. Your own is uh, the work is being, being done. done. You understand? Yeah. So 
the employer needs to, there are some things the employer needs to know to safeguard the safety and security measures they should put in place mm -hmm. to safeguard, you know, most yeah. of these things. Mm -hmm. The CCTV camera is the one that has helped to pick out most of these ones that have happened. Mm -hmm. So if they know it's important, they will start fixing. Mm -hmm. And for people, you know, the, those days we used to be our neighbor's keeper. Mm -hmm. Something is happening in your house, your neighbor has seen and... Now even if they see, they'll remove their yeah, eyes. Everybody and is way. just binding mm -hmm. there. So that one is difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. So there are measures that the employer needs to put in place. So if they would allow us, we'll let them know these things. When these people come, what to look out for, mm -hmm. you understand? When they are having issues, how to know how to handle the issues. Okay. Yes. So please enlighten us more on the training of the employees. Okay, the house, uh, yeah. the domestic staff. The domestic staff. Well, um, apart from the physical, how to dress a bed and all that, we go into that but not in detail mm -hmm. because that is not really the main yeah, issue. Yeah. The issue they always have are mostly character issues. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't know how to bond with the family because somebody has told them they're just going to get to work. Mm -hmm. Some agents even tell them after three months, you come have back. to leave there. Yes, so. Because then when they take you somewhere else, they'll, they'll collect, collect fees. The new person they are bringing to you, they'll collect commission. Mm -hmm. So they need to know that it's their own life. It's not the agent's life. It's not even that cousin or brother in the village mm -hmm. that is disturbing you. Where is money? Where is money? It's about you. So we want to let them know that you need to work for your own self. So if bonding with the family will make your job easier, then do that. Mm -hmm. We need to build up their character, build up their self-esteem, because some of them have been told they will amount to nothing because you didn't go to school. You will never be anything. So we need to build their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Teach them safety and security measures. They should know mm -hmm. as house helps to help their own organ. Because if you do something good for your ogre, mm -hmm. your ogre will reward you. Yeah. And you know, it's, it, there, there's a case of somebody, even in the Bible, the Naaman's uh, house help. A house help can even be your saving grace. You mm -hmm. never know. So when they integrate into the family, you know, they, are, they stand a better chance of making it in life. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good to sensitize them to know that they are going in there to work. Mrs. Chima, please tell us. What language do you use to communicate okay. to during the housekeepers period, yes. yeah, during your training? We understand that most of them can't speak English, mm -hmm. so we're not even going there. We train in Pidgin English, we train in Yoruba, and we have somebody that translates in French, because okay. some of them have been, well, a lot of them have been coming from Cotonou, and they only understand French, mm -hmm. so we do that as well, because most of them cannot really understand English language so well. You know, some of them, you talk and talk and talk. It's as if they do not, they can't some hear you. They do not understand you. They deliberately oh, yes. do that. There are some that deliberately do that. Wow. But there are some that are slow. Mm -hmm. They are slow. You know, everybody wants to work. Mm -hmm. There are some that shouldn't even be doing that kind of work. But because of circumstances, Ooh, they find yeah, themselves. Yes. Indeed. There are some that should be in their little corner, making clothes. Okay. Making, they don't have to communicate too much mm -hmm. with people. Uh -huh. So... That's the issue. Okay. Some of them just want to do this work and they don't really have, you know, what, what it, it takes. takes. Really? So yes. how do you look out for such things when you are... At the point of interviewing, you okay. pick out some of these things. Okay. When you ask a straight question, to give you a straight answer. And look in there and give you a straight answer. But by the time they begin to... Begin to what should be very alert? I've never looked at it from that angle, that some people are not meant to be housekeepers. That's because you're interviewing her in the house. <laughs> if you were in your office, you will look out for some things. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So, do you do follow up in the house? Yes, after the training. Yeah, mm -hmm. because because at the point of registering them to be trained, we will ask for your email addresses and your mm -hmm. phone numbers. Okay. Yes, so that after the training, we will give you feedback what we have trained them on, mm -hmm. what you should expect, mm -hmm. and what they think. In the what they think, we don't personalize to say okay. your person said. We mm -hmm. just generalize so that there won't be issues. So based on that, they will look and pick out the one that pertains to them. And we tell them to, you know, help us monitor after the training if they've improved or not. Mm -hmm. So that towards the end of the year, we'll be able to, you know, just we'll keep that. In, in, oh, in it's so good. I must say that you are filling in a very big gap here. Um, I thank you. You are doing that. such a big job. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Simple remedies from your kitchen. You'll be wondering, what does she have for us today? What does she have for us today? Today, I want us to look at our hair 
I like to do it natural. I like to go the natural way. If I don't have a choice, that's when I do it differently. But my first choice is always the natural way. For you to have a good hair, healthy hair, strong hair. You know, these days we are trying to do a go natural with our hair. This is what you do every week. You get an egg, you break it, raw egg. You use everything, the white and the yolk. Some people will say use only white. I use full because the yolk will give you the protein. The white will make your hair strong. Then you add juice of one lemon. This lemon is a wonderful fruit. Squeeze the juice into it. Just of one lemon. I add my honey, natural honey. A spoon to it. Honey will help to grow your hair. The lemon will help to fight dandruff. You whisk it very well. Whisk it thoroughly. You apply it to your hair, totally from the roots to the, to the ends of your hair. Apply it all over. I can't put it on my hair now. Apply it and leave it for an hour. You don't have to apply any heat to it. And you wash it off after one hour and feel your hair. You'll see that it's strong. At the same time, it will be shiny because of the lemon. It will be strong because of the egg white and the honey. You know, you have to take care of your hair just like you take care of your body. If you do not feed it, you will not see results. Everything is about care. Try it and see. And send us an email. Give us a call. Call us. We'll answer all your questions. That's my tip for you today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.